Hello, I am Kritika De, the PR and Communications Manager for Pickle Factory. Pickle Factory Calcutta is a hub for dance and movement, a space where the dance curious can meet, think, know, talk and imagine dance. We are working towards a permanent venue in the city, a home for dance where the artists and audiences can meet, mingle, nurture and be with each other. Until such time that we have such a venue or even the ability to go out, we strive to create this home for dance wherever we are, even online for the moment. And in this endeavor, we are delighted to partner with TopCat CCU in the new series Body Languages, where we feature a dancer each week and explore body movement. This evening, we are featuring Priya Darshini Kosh, who is an Indian classical and contemporary dancer, a choreographer, and a dance scholar. Priya Darshini will elaborate on the principles that govern her dance and movement practice. Her form takes elements of meditative and mindfulness practices, weaving together yoga and dance, and focuses on the breath and prana. We hope that you enjoy today's session of body languages. Thank you. So- Oh, oh, oh. 
Good evening and welcome everybody. Uh, I would like to begin by thanking Top Cat CCU and Pickle Factory for having me share my experience. Uh, before we start, before I start interacting, uh, let me speak a little bit about, you know, all that you saw. And I went backwards from where I am today, what is happening being, you know, locked in. And uh, my classical training, my work with yoga, and, you know, improvisation with cross training. So I have quite a few vocabularies in my body. Um, you know, learning uh, pedagogically developed um, <clears throat> classical, classical, right, pedagogically designed from classicals, uh, Ratanatyam, Mohiniyattam. Then I learned Sarai Kala Chau. I've been away, I was in Southeast Asia, where I got a chance to uh, interact and have some cross training with contemporary dance. Uh, and I worked in collaborations with contemporary dancers. And of course, yoga, uh, I started when I was a kid, when I, there was no understanding, I could do anything, everything, but no understanding. I stopped, came back, stopped, came back many times, uh, each time with a different layering of understanding. And slowly, uh, when I went, there was, then I you know, got a chance to go to the American Dance Festival as an international choreographer in residence. And uh, what struck me was that for a two-hour class, uh, we had to go through a 45 minutes of release of the body. And that is when I, uh, you know, restarted looking at my yoga training and the concepts of yoga, not only the practical, but the theory bit, going back to theory of my dance, dance background. And uh, my dance became a theory practice regiment uh, led by understanding of the breath and 
Quran. So what uh, I didn't do too much, I mean, you didn't see too much of the Mohini Atam, because I think lots of people have seen me, especially in Calcutta, you know, performing Mohini Atam. Uh, and my uh, body routine or dancing or whatever I may say sorry sorry um, it has to parallel I mean there is a structured bit and there is something which just you know it's an organic embodied movement that I do um, I'm sorry am I being heard can somebody let me know that this is audio is okay Is uh, everybody can follow me? Um, so What I will now show is a bit of the structured uh, movement that uh, we do with our students. Okay, now I've got the okay that everything is going okay. I can carry on. Um, so, as I said, there is a structured bit. So, I go through my, you know, structured routine of yoga every morning, which is the yoga asanas of uh, uh, releasing joints, uh, Pavanamukta asanas. And when I take class, There are some structured movements, and I will show that. A bit of it only. So, I call these the mandala exercises, and again, this are, these are done with the use of breath. So, uh, and the basic breath principle being expansion, breathing, contraction, breathing up. So, breathe in. in.
so that was the lower torso. We have exercises of the upper torso also. You know, the Atibhanga movement of Mahiriyatam. So breathe out and in, out, in. So these are the structured bed. And mm -hmm. at times, I feel like doing a structured bed. At times, it's something, it can be a chant. I can put on a Dhrupad music and just move. At times, I sit and move also. There is another component which I use as this meditative practice, which is of the face, greatly derived from the Kuryatam text. So I will show again just a one eye exercise. So fix the gaze, relax the body, breathe in. And out. So, and then, you know, there are lip exercises and other exercises. Uh, and that comes and go as a structure, unstructured. And if anybody has questions, please let me know. Okay, let me just go through. Okay, I shall answer. So Vikram has said, we didn't see Mohini Artem per se, but there were so many, and which is why I didn't show the Mohini Artem, because uh, my body is greatly informed by the Mohiniyatam form. And which is why I also took the clippings that you would see that, you know, the swaying Mohiniyatam form, which I practice as a classical artist. And that kind of becomes a muscle memory. So, um, also, that is something which had unconsciously come into my body when I was, as a child, when I was learning in CLT. Uh, we were taught by Balakrishna Menon, uh, one of the senior most students of Guru Gopina. And what really our body learned was the Mohiniyata movements. Okay, is there anything else you would like me to talk about? Okay, I'm waiting. Um, Please do let me know if uh, I Okay, so, okay, so Dana has asked, tell us a little about the pieces you showed us. Okay, the first piece was, 
completely what as i said i went backwards from present uh that was not a pace at all that was just moving with the breath guided by the breath the second piece clip that i showed was that was a premier production of natanova when i returned and mohana mohana ayer and i started natanova that was a premier piece uh, called hiranya garbha based on the chakras so what you saw was the earth element uh with the yantra which was the square and uh the muladhara chakra so we used the uh, yoga and dance movements that's when we started working uh with the yoga movements uh with dance and trying to integrate both and uh, we used the you know the geometric patterns of the yantra according to the different uh, energy points or the chakras then the third piece was a pure mohiniyattam piece uh, very famous pannagendra shana shri patanaka and the last piece was a very uh, piece which i did uh almost 15 years ago and it's about uh, a hum and you know about women and so it was really from a uh, contemporary look at the naikas so that was a vipralabha for me so those were the pieces uh yes so i'm answering vikram's question and he has said you've worked quite a lot in southeast asia and internationally given that you worked so much from indian classical dance and yoga what was that experience like to collaborate with dancers there your learnings how you modified or communicated etc so as i said that my southeast asia uh, time i uh, did go for some cross training and i saw the techniques of contemporary dance and realized very hopefully that it will not never come into my body and it is really in ads uh, when we did the negotiating the process a class where started the started of my thinking of how i can improvise with what is there in my body and fortunately i also worked with dancers in southeast asia who were also using southeast asian uh dance principles so it was not only the western form that we were exploring and uh really it is uh, i would say what i learned from the west was looking at structuring how to go about it understand and then you know i realized when i started studying my own dance texts that quite a bit of it is there i have a long abhinaya training uh, background with the kalani di narayana and so abhinaya and telling a story is very much part of when i go okay vandana or which country is in south east asia uh, uh, katie lai roy has asked so i was in sa hong kong and singapore for almost 12 years and vandana marol has asked can these yoga derived breathing techniques work with other indian classical dances 
absolutely it is what i showed as uh, you know when you do any of the stretches it's a breathe in and breathe out so she i know as a kathak dancer so a stretch out you will reach out that much more and so yes it can work with any dance form Okay. Speaking of Southeast Asian principles, can you elaborate on some of them that connects this region and also differentiates from the West? Uh, okay, so uh, I did work with uh, you know the practitioners who did Balinese dance. Uh, in Southeast Asia, Malaysian dancers, which has that, uh, you know, our mandala of a squat position, uh, movements of the torso a lot. Um, so those kind of things and breath, Tai Chi, Chinese opera. Chinese opera is so much like our Pudyatam and uh, Kathakali. Chinese dances are, you know, very circular movements. Tai Chi is totally, you know, the Chi breath, uh, base, prana. And so all that, when I worked with them, those are the things I could uh, very much uh, find the parallels with it. And uh, what it differentiates i would say uh, when i don't know now it might be changing with the western techniques today but at that time which was late 90s early 2000 it was more on you know the body the physical body and while the eastern principles had this thing of something working from within so i think that was one big uh, difference that i saw from the west where the west was all you know uh, physical training of the body breath did come in for, uh, at that point of time a lot of uh, uh, contemporary dancers who were working with uh, uh, some chinese uh, traditions had put in the breath and uh, I think that was one big difference that I saw with the West and I'm sure today there is no you know I see a lot of uh, practitioners today West East I mean I think back uh, barriers are breaking down today West, East, everything, which is fabulous. So, uh, while I wait if there are any other questions uh, what I would like to say that it is a challenge to you know be at the situation uh, I find it difficult to practice you know in on a norm in a normal times there were classes going on we were rehearsing one rehearsal to the other and then I did try to you know, do a bit of my class you know items practice items that became very boring and so I said I'm going to just even if I'm sitting I'm just going to maybe use this whole breath thing 
and me. However, I won't be. So, you know, just the head. And our phones have these body isolations. So, breathe in. Out and often, most of the times when I'm doing it today, it becomes that very I it just my eyes close because I'm concentrating on the, the body part that it's impacting, where I'm feeling the stretch, how my breath is working. So, you know, the shoulder. The sides, the pashva, which we have, which is, you know, stretching, which we use a lot in Mohini Atam. So, we're just breathing in. So, if I feel like stretching, instead of doing a basic stretch and sitting but my spine is working so this has been giving me you know, a lot of satisfaction and keeping my body moving. Okay. So, as Vikram said, uh, can you take us through some of these exercises that all of us can do on a regular basis? Uh, so, the people who, even if your dance doesn't uh, have the squat the squat helps in both uh, you know uh, strengthening the core muscles as we call it and the thigh uh, so you know what you saw in my dance the spinal Take it to the side as much as you can. And So this was right side, left side, you can do the same thing. And so things that stretch the body and of course the twist. So uh this one in So, just one simple things that everybody can do. Uh, you can do this. 
the eyes i think that is very very meditative for me you know just to keep staring at the point so traditionally this is done looking at a lamp uh in kerala kathakali mohiniyattam all the forms just you know look at the lamp the lamp is what is you know, that focus so you know with the breath and then it becomes a muscle memory for your eyes also when you have to look you know that breath kind of comes in automatically into the eyes especially for you know the indian classical forms or any dance any performance lips we then relax in relax eyebrows then of course there are eye exercises where you circle the eye take the eyes from side to side eights so those are very very those are exercises uh that you know are i have drawn from the kerala traditions so yes you know as katie said thus this is seems possible for us to do yes my body pushed me to do it like a dance you don't even need to do it as a dance so you know it just if you put on some nice music and just relax as i say i'm doing so good it it just feels <laughs> oh great i love dina says that neck has clicked very nicely and so the neck exercises we have so many of the neck exercises that are there in natya shastra so we there in you can build all that in thank you very much for um listening to me and i thank pickle factory and top cap cc again there's more where that came from look out for more body language sessions on the top cap cc live cast on facebook at 6 pm we have a host of other programs as well exploring the world of dance and movement do drop us a line join us follow us support us we'd love to hear from you see you next wednesday